Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So this is a new video that I'm posting on uh, my YouTube channel. And uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to show you about a very important feature, which is called the recursive route. And while speaking about recursive route, we have to speak also about the scope and the target scope. So what does it mean, the recursive route? And uh, what does it mean also the uh, scope and the uh, target scope? All of these uh, things I'm going to show you in uh, this lab and uh, it's going to be on the latest router OS version 7. So all the configuration that we are going to do will be on the router OS version 7. As you can see here, we have a lab of five points. Before I start doing those points, let's go to the lab scenario to show you what is the scenario. And then I will come back to the points and start doing them. So this is my lab scenario. I do have here three routers connected to each other and I have this destination network. This network over here is going to be a bridge interface that I have created on the router 3. So we assume that it is a network. When you create a bridge interface and you put an IP on it, then it's like a connected network to this router. So what is the idea here? The idea is that I want router 1 at the end to reach to this network. All right, that's the whole idea that I want to do. But I don't want to use the normal static route that uh, we use. So normally what we used to do, we have to say here on router one to go to anywhere, send everything to your next hop, which is this IP address, which is his next hop, because he knows about that IP. It's directly connected to him. Then we tell him that to go to anywhere, go to here. Also on router two, we say to go to anywhere. If you want to reach, for example, 3.3.3.3. Uh, network, then send everything to your next hop, which is over here. Then also we do a route back from router three to say to go to anywhere, send everything to your next hop, which is the IP address of router two on that interface. And in this way, we have possibility that router one can reach to router three and router three, uh, of course, on the IP address of his uh, network and router three knows how to answer back to router one. So that's something we normally used to do it like that. But let's say that we don't want that we use this way. We want to use recursive route. So what is exactly the recursive route? Recursive route means that I make a route and I say that the gateway of this route is not the directly connected IP, which is the next hope. It's somewhere far from him. For example, what we're going to do in this lab saying that I will make a route here. I will say that router one to go to 3.3.3.3 has to send everything to this IP, which is on this interface. This is not connected to him. Actually, it's not connected to him. So normally the router doesn't understand because it's not directly connected to him. Then it doesn't work. So what we are going to do, I have to do one route first to say to reach to this network then send everything to this IP over here. So router one knows to reach to this network. Then I'm going to use this route to be able to make this recursive route. Then I will say for router one to reach to 3.3.3.3, then send everything to this next hop, which is actually this IP address over here. And this IP address is able to be reached from this route that we are going to create it, then this is what is the recursive route. So recursive route means that you can use a route that is already installed on your router to reach a network which is somewhere else. So you use it to be able to do the recursive route. And that's what exactly the recursive route is. Now I understand that you may say, wow, that is not very clear for us. And what do you mean exactly? No problem with the lab. I'm going to show you how we can do that. Now, of course, for this recursive route to work, we have to play with the scope and we have to play with the target scope. So during the lab, I'm going to explain to you what are the those are two attributes, which are the scope and the target scope. Now, the last thing that I want to say, where shall we use the recursive route? Normally, recursive routes, we use them when we want to do something like failover. So when we don't want to do a failover, a failover with a script, something that I have showed it on one of my failover courses, then we can use the recursive route. Or we can also see the recursive route a lot inside the IBGP because the IBGP doesn't need that the uh, peers to be connected to each other. So we can use the recursive route to be able to form the IBGP peers between the routers. So enough of uh, explanation now. Now you just got the idea. 
Now we go back now to the lab. So we do the lab and then with the end of the lab, you will see that you will understand exactly what I meant with the recursive route. So let's go now back to the labs and start doing the points. Point number one, all IP addresses are set as per the graph. So let's put the picture here and le let me show you that I have already put the IP addresses as per the graph. So this is router one. You can see it's on version 7.2.1, which is the latest stable version on router OS version seven. So this is on Ethernet one, the IP on router one. This is router two now. You can see it has IP addresses on Ethernet one and Ethernet two. And we have router three at the end, which has IP addresses on the Ethernet 2, and this is the bridge interface which represents the network, which is the destination network that Router 1 needs to reach. So those are the IP addresses already set. Point number one is done. Point number two, from Router 3, do a default route. So why we need to do a default route from Router 3? Now, if we go back to the picture here, what we need to do, we want that to reset that Router 1 to reach to this network, right? But once the packet comes from Router 1 to Router, or to this network to say, then in this case, router 3 has to answer back. So say that you are doing a ping, then the router 3 has to send the ping back. Then in this case, he should send it to router 1. And uh, the, for this reason, we do a default route. We say, to reach to anywhere, send everything to this next hop IP address. So that's what the default route is. So router 3 can answer back any type of traffic coming to him so he knows how to answer back. So that's why we need to do the default route. Let's do it very fast. We'll go to router 3, IP routes. And you can see now router 3 doesn't know more than those connected uh, networks, which are the 3.3 and 192.3. So those are the connected networks that he knows. Now we have to make a default route and we say to go to anywhere, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then send everything to your next hop, which is 192.1.2.3.2. And then I will say here, apply, look, this is the gateway. And now we have a default route. So once we make a ping from router one, router three knows how to send the ping reply back. Point number two is done. Point number three, can you reach the network 3.3.3.3.0 from router two? If not, fix the problem. So let's go to router two and let's do a ping to see what is the uh, reply, if we have a reply or not. Ping 10 to 3.3.3.3 and we can see that no route to host. So you can look now inside the router, uh, this is router 2, and we can look to the IP routes. So you can see inside this routing table, he doesn't know anything how to send to 3.3.3.3. All right, so it's very important that router 2 knows how to reach to that network, because we said we want router 1 to reach to that network, and router 2 also to reach to that network. So let's make a route, and we say here to go to 3.3.3.0 slash 24, then send everything to your next hop, which is 182.3.3. All right. So what I'm saying here, if we go back to the picture, I'm saying to router two, router two, if you want to go to this network, send everything to here. So he makes a ping, he can reach to this network. Router three, he knows how to send it back to him because it's directly connected to him. Then the ping should work. And let's check now if it's going to work or not. So we go back to router 2 and we issue the ping. And now we can see that this network is able to be reached. Point number three is done. Point number four, can you reach the network 192.168.23.0 from router 1? If not, fix the problem. So now what I want also, if we go back to the picture, let's clear it a little bit. So at this moment, I want that uh, um, router 1 also to reach to this network. Why? Because we are going to use this network for the recursive route. All right. So at this moment, router one is not able to reach to this network. And I can show you if we go to router one and we go to IP routes, you can see he doesn't know anything about 192.168.23.0. He only knows about his connected network. So for this reason, he can't ping it. Now, what I'm going to do is just to say, to go to 192.168.23.0 slash 24, then send everything to your next shop, which is 192.168.12.2. Please look to the picture. You can see all the IP addresses are set on the pictures. So you can see what I'm doing. So I'm saying to reach to that network, send everything to your next shop, which is the IP address on Ethernet 1 of router 2. And then I will say here, enter. And okay. Now, if I try to ping, 
192.168.23.3. So we can see that we can reach to that network. So what we have now in a summary, as a summary, what we have that router 3 has a default route to reach to anywhere. He has to send everything to this next hop. Router 2 can reach to 3.3.3.3. Router 1, he can reach also this network. So we made a default route. So he could reach to the IP, which is on router 3, without any problem over here. So you can see we have here three routers. And imagine how many static routes you are doing. That's why I always say that once you have a big network, then you better use dynamic routes, because you don't have to do all of this work yourself. Now, for uh, the router want to reach now 3.3.3.3. We are going to see that in the upcoming point. What we need to do. Point number four is done. Point number five. Can you reach the network 3.3.3.0 from router one? If not, make a recursive route with the gateway of 192.168.23.3. All right. So now, if we go back to the picture, so that's what we have at this moment as route. Do you think that router one can go to 3.3.3.3? Let's have a look what router one has in his routing table. We go to IP routes on router one. You can see that router one does not know anything about 3.3.3.0 networks. And you can see if we make here again ping to 3.3.3.3, and then I make enter, then there is no route to host. So we have to make a route. Now, there are two ways to do. Or we use the normal route, or we do the uh, recursive route. If you want, I can show you both. So let's first do the normal route that we do. So what we can say, we say to router one, hey, router one, if you want to go to this network, send everything to your next hop, which is the IP on router two on Ethernet two. Then the traffic come here. Router two knows how to reach to 3.3.3.3 because he has a route. Then he will send it to here. Now, router 3, he has to answer back. So he will send everything to the next hop of the uh, router, which is router 2. And then router 2 knows how to send it back to him because it's, this network is directly connected to him. Then in this way, the ping will work. So that's something we have to do. Now, it's not a recursive route. I'm just showing you now like what we normally do. So what we can do, we can just go to router 1. And we can say to go to 3.3.3.0 slash 24, or we can do also default route if you want. It's, uh, it's both uh, they can work. So we have to go to 192.168.122, which is his next hop. And if I make enter, now if I try to make the ping again to 3.3.3.3, you can see it is working because we have routes everywhere and this is gonna work without any problem. So that is the easiest way to do it, but that's not a recursive route. What I have deleted already. So what the recursive route that I want is, let's just make a bit of clean here so we can, we can see what uh, is the recursive route. So the recursive route, what I want is that I already have from router one a route to 192.168.23.0. So he knows how to reach to this IP. I want to make a route to say, to send to 3.3.3.0 network, send everything to this next hop, which is not directly connected to him. And that's what is the recursive route. The IP or the interface is not directly connected to the router. So he knows how to reach to this network. And then this way we can do the recursive route. So what the router one is doing, he is using one of the route, which is this one that we have already created. He's using it to be able to reach to the gateway, which is far away from him. So let me show you how we can do that on the uh, router one. So we go to IP route. I have to say here to go to 3.3.3.0 network slash 24. Then send everything to the gateway, which is 192.168.23.3. 23.3 is, if we go to the picture, is this IP, which is over here. All right, so it's far away from him. All right, that's what I need to do. Let's see what is going to happen now. And I'll say here, apply. Look, the route is not active. It gives me some error. And there is a reason why. Let me show you what is the reason, which is the scope and the target scope. If we go inside this uh, route that we have just created. So in the scope of the router one, 
there is this uh, route, which is 192.168.23. So he knows how to reach to 192.168.23. All right, so that's what is this scope. Now, what we need to do now, we should have this scope over here, this number, less or equal to the target scope, so this can go active. Again, the scope, which is 30, should be equal or less than the target scope over here. Because the target scope now is the one which is less, then this is not gonna be active. So let's put this target scope 30. We can change the target scope or you can change the scope. But now we make it equal. Look what's gonna happen to the route here, apply. Here we go. So you can see this route as AS means active static. It is uh, active now. And if we look now, look, it's saying the intermediate gateway is 192.8.12.2. That's the intermediate gateway. Excellent. Very, very good. So it's using now this route, which is over here, to be able to have this uh, route working. All right, so that's ex what the recursive route is. And now if you go to the terminal, and we try to ping 3.3.3.3, here we go. So it is working, and this is all about the recursive route. Now, before I finish the recursive route, I just want to show you that every routing protocol has a scope and a target scope, which is by default. And that's something you can play with that. You can change it as we have changed it. So again, to, for the recursive route to work, we should have the, the scope less or equal to the target scope. So if we go now to wiki, um, uh, wiki microtech scope target scope, just to check if we can have something here. And we go down over here. This is what I want to see, this one. The scope and the target scope. You can see that uh, every uh, routing protocol, so connected, has a scope of 10, <coughs> and it has a target scope of 10. Uh, here, the uh, this is the static that we are using. It has a scope of 30, target scope of 30. For the recursive route to work, the scope should be less or equal to the target scope. Now, if you want, we can go to the router and we can look to the connected. So this is one which is connected. Actually, it has scope of uh, 10 and there is no target scope. Yeah, that's correct. It doesn't have a target scope, the connected. All right, so you can see it uh, over here. Excellent. So you can see that every uh, routing protocol has a scope and the target scope. That's something you can play with it. So what is exactly the scope? The scope is that a route is in the scope of the router. So the router knows about that network. So for example, here, if we go to the IP routes, we can look at, uh, for example, we go to that one. So the uh, uh, network, which is uh, 192.168.23.0, is in the scope of the router. All right. Now, to make it uh, uh, this route valid, then the target scope and uh, the scope, they should be equal or the uh, scope should be less than the target scope. So now, if we make it 40, for example, you can see it's still valid. It's still the route working. But if I make this one 25, which is... Uh, less than the scope, then it's not going to work. So very important that the scope should be less or equal to the target scope. So if we put it 30 again, then it is going to work. Point number five is done. And uh, with this point, I have showed you a very nice lab about uh, the recursive routes using also the attributes, which are scope and target scope. Now we understand why we need it. And I have showed you how we can use the recursive route. And that's something, again, you can see it if you do some type of failover with the script or you use the iBGP on uh, the Microtech routers. That is all what I wanted to show you in this video. If you like my video, please do not forget to uh, make a like on the video and I would be happy to read your comments. And if you can also subscribe to my channel so more people know about uh, my work. So thank you very much for your time and see you in some other videos.